Hi everyone, today we have a new video review and as you can see this time we are going to talk about a release from Miniard. Of course it's a kit in 135 scale and we get here a Panzerkampfwagen 4, it's so called AUSP-J version, as you can see in Nibelungen work. And we have mid-production type uh, from September and November 1944. And what is interesting here is that this kit is actually coming as an interior kit, so it means we also get all of the internals in the standard package, you don't have to buy them separately. This might be useful for some diorama ideas or maybe just for placing some maybe figurines, maybe exposing some internals because it's always interesting to check all of this stuff in 135 scale and this kit gives you a really good opportunity I would say. So first of all here I have the final shape of this release, you should be able to get it in all good model shops, for example Modelimax will have it for sure. The kit number is written there, it's 35339 and the box size is typical here you can see comparison with my hand, it's quite heavy by the way. And here on the side you can see also some information about the manufacturer, we have some safety devices. On the opposite side you will find six marking options, these are typical German tank camouflages and I think you will be able to pick something suitable for your build. So it's a top opening box and here is what we have inside, so as you can see it is filled up to the top with the spruce and that's why you will have to be careful while uh, let's say handling this box it's the first thing and of course while shipping it so maybe it's worth asking the seller to carefully pack it and also to add some padding to the box because otherwise you might end up with a slightly damaged box at least but the parts should stay intact at least as you can see in my case they are all right even though they went through the rough postal shipment so i don't think yours will be damaged somehow and what i'm doing right now is actually cutting through the plastic bag so just give me a moment i will try to do it quickly and we will check together all of the plastic parts which are supplied here and it's quite huge amount to be honest that's why actually miniard stopped uh, showing the parts count onto the uh, boxes and on the assembly manuals because this was getting more and more impressive if we can say so and first I'm starting with the large envelope because here we have quite an important bonuses so first of all here you can see the unpainted PE thread so this one is the smaller one in the kit and as you can see this one is more focused with the internals with uh, various structure parts and also with the meshes but we also get the so-called Schurzen, so this one is coming on the separate PE thread and in my opinion this is a huge advantage of this kit because as you can see they are replicated with actual metal parts and why it is important because you can replicate various damage because these panels were usually bent and somehow uh, let's say damaged during the battles so that's why they were not straight uh, you can replicate it better with the PE parts and as you can see this is a perfect quality you just need to uh, carefully separate all of this stuff and of course uh, also to assemble it do not forget that for those PE parts you need to use the uh, special CA glue and of course you can also apply the primer so that the paint will uh, properly cover these parts so if you, as long as you remember the simple rules you should be all right next I'm opening the next plastic bag probably you can hear it and I will just move this key thread to the side because here in the separate plastic bag we have the uh, clear sprue as you can see this one is dedicated to various periscopes and lenses overall molding quality looks fine but uh, as usual Miniard does not supply any masks or masking templates for this part so you will have to be uh, covering all of this by yourself and cutting the stickers also by yourself. Here you can see also the decals, so those ones are looking quite nice and they are coming from Decograph as you can see here, so camera will focus probably in a second I hope, yeah now you should be able to see we have various stencils here included and overall printing quality looks really good so it's just a matter of applying them on your model. Next we continue with uh, first grey plastic sprue so here I can see the top hull parts as well as the 
uh, some parts for the main gun. For example, here we have the muzzle brakes, that's the main gun barrel. We have also the lower section of the turret, so all of this is placed here. And molding quality looks fine, as you can see some of the complex shaped parts are also molded as a single piece parts. And inside we also get some features, so it's also a notable thing because in 135 scale interior kit it's quite valuable to get the parts detailed from both sides. Next we continue with the turret parts, so here you can see the separate panels. Note that all of the hatches are actually separate as well, which is really important because uh, it might be useful to expose the interior as I was saying before, or maybe just to place some figurines inside. And uh, well, this kit does not have any figurines in the standard package, but you can get them in the separate kit from Miniart, of course. And I reviewed some of them, so in case you are interested, definitely check it out on the YouTube channel which you are watching. Here we continue with parts for the engine compartment. So again, quite nice details. And as you can see, a lot of stuff will be actually assembled by the separate sections. So definitely check out in which sequence they should be assembled, so that later you won't be having a problem reaching this or that section and uh, trying to paint it properly. Here you can also see the parts from the opposite side, so we have some guiding elements, and overall I like how even the thinnest parts are molded, so there is no flash or any other possible molding problem. Next we continue also with the track parts. So the Panzer IV kits from Miniart are notable for their separate track links. As you can see we have one plastic bag with uh, separate track links, they are supplied just like this, and then we have another plastic bag with the uh, side uh, pins, which should be connecting the links together, and this will be quite a tedious work, especially considering the fact that Miniart does not supply you with the assembly jig. At least I remember that it was not included in some of the releases, we will see how it will be in this one. But the next sprue is dedicated here for the panels for the lower hull section. So these are two side walls. This is the rear armor wall. And if I flip it over here, you can check them from the opposite side. So again, we have a lot of pre-molded things. And try to check some references in order to understand how to properly paint all of those items. Because I think your model will only benefit from careful paint work. Next, I am checking the plastic sprue with uh, various external elements. So overall I see that the parts division is done in a quite smart way because we have a lot of parts which are molded as a single piece parts but still you have to install them one by one and as you can see here is comparison with my fingertip they are quite tiny so do not underestimate this kit because it's a 135 scale there is still a lot of things which will require installation with uh, tweezers probably because otherwise it will be really tricky. Here we have some parts for the main gun. So again they will go into the turret and there will be a lot of uh, I would say details out of the box. And all of these things will be visible if you plan to open the turret hatches which is really good. Next we continue with the plastic sprues for Again, external features for the lower section as far as you can see. I'm just checking the custom marks here, so probably worth zooming in for you as well so that you can see what I'm talking about here. So the custom marks are on all of these uh, parts which will be used for the drivetrain. Probably you can see them now when camera is focused. And this is a really good thing and some of you might say that it will be barely noticeable on the finished model, but it might be noticeable for some cases uh, when you try to build the tank, for example, with a damaged suspension or maybe with some other types of the uh, scene where the suspension elements which will be actually exposed. Next we have the parts for the fighting compartment. So here I don't see any possible issues or obvious issues. The only thing is that again some of the parts should be combined together so be ready for this. It might take some time and uh, as for any interior kit it might be a tedious procedure so definitely get some patience and you will be good to go. Next, I'm trying to pick the next plastic sprue, probably this one. So here we have the plastic shorts on for the turret. We also have some hatches for the engine compartment. And the shorts on this one, it's quite thin as you can see. So even though it's a plastic part, it is still up to scale. And in my opinion, this is a very important feature of this kit. Next, we continue with the 
parts for the drive sprockets. They come in on the same plastic sprues, so I will show you only one. And here you can see that each drive sprocket will have to be assembled out of two parts. And we have attachment points on the teeth, as you can notice. So this is also something what will be handy during the separation of those parts. Next, we continue with the idlers, which are also coming on two sprues. Again, it's a combination of several parts, and again, we have inside the guiding elements, which will help you with the proper alignment, so you don't have to keep track of how the spokes are aligning together. Next, we continue with the tensioners. These are coming on four sprues, which are also identical. Here you can see them. Again, guiding elements on the opposite side, and if I flip it over here, you can see that they have nice external features. And maybe it's worth painting them before installing the tracks. I know some modellers who are actually assembling the whole suspension and then trying to paint all of this stuff. Of course, it's your decision whether you would like to go this way. Here, by the way, we have another type of the idlers. I guess it will depend on the uh, version of the tank you will choose. Next, another plastic sprue with interior parts. Here we have mostly the panels for the fighting compartment, but as you can see, now again we have uh, quite thin attachment points, and also parts are shaped in the right way straight out of the box, so you don't have to combine separate panels. Next, one more type of the plastic sprues, it's actually four of them. Here we have the road wheels and also suspension. So all of this will be quite a repetitive task, so be ready for this. It will take some time for sure. And also it might be a good idea to check the alignment, even though we have the attachment points here, which will be also serving as a guiding and alignment points. But still, uh, for such things, I recommend to be careful because later you might end up with the a bit tilted tank and that's not such a good thing to have. Next, I'm getting one of the plastic sprues with the ammo, so here you can see. And all of this ammo can go inside the tank, of course you are not obliged to use uh, all of these items, you can keep some for your future builds. And I think in 135 scale it's a really useful add-on. Next we continue with engine parts, so again a bit bigger plastic sprue, and as I said the engine compartment will be very detailed, that's why some modellers are actually trying to open it and expose the engine on the tank, because otherwise it's quite a shame to hide it inside. And continuing the topic of the small sprues, so here we have also the Pioneer tools, and these tools are provided, as far as you can see, without the clamps. So I guess the clamps will be replicated with the PE parts. Next, we have another plastic sprue with the tools. Here we have the tools with the clamps. So basically you get to choose whether you would like to use the pre-molded clamps or you are fine with um, installing the PE parts, which will be a bit more tedious, but it will be up to scale. Next, we have more interior parts. So here we have a combination of the fighting compartment as well as the uh, gearbox here, and also some parts for the turret. And if we flip it over, gearbox has the guiding elements, for example. Next, I just need to place this part properly. And then we continue with the parts for interior. This is again the engine bay. Okay. One more plastic sprue with the four panel and also some turret parts. We also have some side skirt. Another side skirt will be on the separate frame. But if I flip over this uh, four panel, as you can see here, we have everything uh, promoted as well. We have escape hatch promoted as well, which is quite unusual for Miniard because, as far as I remember, it was molded separately on previous interior kits. Uh, for the engine main block here you can see the parts. So it will be quite a detailed assembly as I said before, but there will be no wiring and that's why it might be a good idea to add some. And next, one more thing, is the two sprues with the various hatches. Here they are. 
And last but not the least is this sprue with more turret parts. I guess the choice of the turret parts will also depend on the type of the tank version you will choose. So definitely pay attention how the parts will be aligning depending on the choice of your uh, tank build. And we were talking about the template for the tracks assembly. So here is the assembly jig. So at least this one will help you to keep the tracks in alignment and you just place the separate track links here and insert the pins from both sides. Uh, it's still a bit tedious task, but I think it will make it easier at least a bit. So we continue with the assembly manual here. I will close the lenses and maybe zoom out a bit. Okay, now you should be able to see what we will be talking about. It's a large color printed brochure and it's surprisingly thick because it's assembly manual for the interior kit. So here we start with the first two marking options. This one is from 1944 from Poland and another one is, um, is just the option two. So I guess it's the same tank but in a different camouflage. And as you can see it has the Schurzen on the outer panels. Here we continue with the parts map. Again parts map and Miniart by the way does not show unused parts. Here we start with the interior floor. Straight away we are painting the ammo for the fighting compartment. So that will be also quite a repetitive task because as you remember we have the separate ammo rounds. Next we start building the gearbox and also apply some decals. So then we install all of this stuff into the driver's area. I can see the driver's seat in place here, then the fighting compartment gets assembled and there on the step 19 you can see the engine assembly begins. So with the engine assembly we have several pages dedicated to it. As you can see the manufacturer does not suggest any wiring so it might be worth to find some reference material which you can use for this purpose. But then we start working on the engine compartment. So here we continue with more parts going into that area. As you can see it is installed on the, the side walls. Next here, I think I flipped over several pages or not? No. So here we continue with the radiators, uh, side skirts. There are also various options mentioned for the hatches. So where you can open the hatches, you have the special sign showing that you can open the hatches. You also have some assembly options as you can see. Mm, for example here we have for the spare tracks. And then we continue with the... Again, more of the external equipment on the small chains, which are replicated with P parts. Here again, we have separate hatches and radio equipment. Then we install the top section of the hull. As you can see, it's assembled separately and then just installed onto the hull. Here we have separate panels for the engine compartment and also the towing cable. Next are the Pioneer tools and fire extinguisher. Here we start working on the drivetrain. So be ready for this. It will take plenty of time, not only because of the assembly, but also because of the painting. And again, we start working on the tracks, which are being installed onto the road wheels. Here we can see the Schurzen assembly guide. So it's a combination of P parts together, and then you just install them onto the side walls. Here we have uh, some options on how you can actually replicate these nets. And if we move on to the next page, here we have the turret assembly guide. So again, turret will be nicely detailed inside. It will involve some P parts as well, as you can see. And that's why I'm saying that it might be worth thinking how to open and expose all of this stuff. Some models even put the uh, some light inside so that it will be visible what is hidden in the model. Here you can see also some choices for the main gun uh, barrel uh, muzzle. And also we have the brackets for the shortson which is molded out of plastic. And again you have some assembly options for that. Here you can see also some final steps, P parts getting installed and then the turret getting installed onto the main hull. Here we have also some other kits, as I said, there is um, the German tank crew available for this tank. Here is the third marking option from Hungary in November 1944. Two more are from Hungary in November 1944 and one more here is the uh, December 1944 without the Schurzen and one more again without the Schurzen winter camouflage in 1944-1945.
As for the whole kit, it should be already available and you can get it in Modelium X webshop. In my opinion, this is a more of a choice for experienced modelers, so if you consider yourself such a um, modeler, then definitely go for it, because you will get a lot of stuff out of the box. And of course, I will be happy to hear your opinion, so do not forget to write it here in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next video review as usual. Thank you for joining me today, and bye!